So NFL owners approved the new fair catch rule in the NFL in which uh, basically if you decide to fair catch it in between anywhere before the 24.9 yard line, you're just going to go ahead and get the ball at the 25 yard line. So they already do this in college football. But the idea and this was talked about yesterday is, again, they want to improve player safety and they feel like this move, which they're calling a quote unquote trial run only for one year this move they feel like is going to reduce the number of concussions by 15 percent because it's going to entice players to maybe not bring the ball out if it's kicked short just take it on the 25 and then move on with your lives and it just feels like this is another step in the direction of the walls closing in and them trying to get rid of one of the most exciting plays in football that we've seen a lot of exciting players be a part of and have uh, major impacts on games and their careers whether it be Devin Hester or Brian Mitchell, you name it, and yet here we are, the NFL is trying to eliminate it all for the sake of player safety. Do we know the percentage on amounts of, like in terms of, you said the percentage going down by 15%. That's what they said. I would be curious as to how many how many concussions, because, you know, my major concussions when I got them were on special teams. I yeah, wonder I mean, what that's... the percentage of special teams <clears throat> concussions are to the entire whole Okay, it's probably been receiving, receivers getting hit, defenseless, or considered to be t- conf- d- defenseless or targeting or whatever it may be. And then it would have to be special teams. And I wonder which I one would be think the most. It's, kickoff is number one, I believe. It's the most dangerous play, it would have which to is be, one of the right? reasons why they're trying to make this this change. Uh, even though it's, it's to the um, disliking of most special teams coaches that are in the NFL, one of the reasons is, they, they, the way they go about kicking the mortar kicks, so they'll kick it basically with, with a bunch of air because a lot of these kickers are strong enough to be able to kick it out of the end zone. Um, but now they'll kick it with enough air to try to get that ball caught somewhere between you know the, the goal line and the five, and then they can cover down enough so now they're not getting the ball you know, out at the 25. They're getting at the 15, the 20, something like that. You know That's kind of become more the style that you've seen attempted in college and then – probably a little better executed at times, even in the NFL. And, and that's the thing is you're probably going to get more of that because, and, and LeVar, you know this, like an extra 10, five yards, it may not seem like a lot to the people on the outside, but that's the difference between you have to stop an additional first down. Mm-hmm. Like that's the difference between a team potentially going for it on fourth down and a defense having to face, you know, four down territory versus three down and being able to get off the field. And, and those numbers add up, obviously, over the course of a game and over the course of a season. And that's why I, I think there's some people who are like, this is, you know, taking it a step maybe a little bit too far, even though it's in the best interest of player safety. So, I, I, look, they're not going to get rid of the kickoff because otherwise, like, what the hell are you going to call the game or the start of the game? It's, it's kind of been the most, like, ceremonial thing ever that just – it just – and it's too it's too much part of the game, right? Yeah, how would you kick, start it if you didn't have the kickoff? That, that's what I'm saying. Is like I don't know. Like I can't picture in my mind what it would look like because you have this big like you know the crowd getting intense, yes. getting excited. The guy swaying. The kicker puts his hand up. It's he awesome. gets ready to go, and, and it's just this oh, I, there's this whole like moment of time where you're like, that's the beginning of it. It's part like, of the vernacular. Hey, what time's kickoff? Now we're yeah, just gonna get yeah, rid of all that. that. But it, it's more about even just being there and the feeling of it. Like it's almost like literally the the, the, the shotgun start at a, at a track race. Like, that's the start. Like, you know that's the moment when you hear that ball literally being kicked and the entire crowd's like, oh, <laughs> it's just – it's just a feel to it. And I, if you took that away, I think it killed the live game experience. It would be the most awkward thing ever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would, it would probably feel like a scrimmage for some reason. Right? But, I mean, would people adapt and adjust if they did adjust it out of the game? I'm certain that the fan base would adapt and adjust. But – to a purist, I, I do think that that would be a difficult – it would be difficult adjusting and adapting to not having a kickoff. But I don't know, man. It, it, it just seems like that is – it definitely is a dangerous part of the sport. It's definitely a part of the sport that you could say if if you found ways to minimize it or even not do it, you're, you're, you're basically preserving the health of, of a lot of guys. 
You know, I don't know. It's just it's such, them guys are moving well, so fast and they're hitting so hard. I, you know, I don't I'll know. Tell you what, I'll tell you why it's not already out of the game. Because how many starters do you actually have on special teams? Not many. You yeah, know, usually your yeah. core special teams guys are the ones that are set up in your L4, L5, R4, L, R, R5. Those are the guys who are set up to make the tackle, make the play. And, and it's those core special teams guys that are backups on defense and offense are the ones that are, are typically the ones that are out there playing special teams and getting hurt. You know, if you had, like, again, we see all sorts of rule changes to protect quarterbacks because people tend to think, well, hey, these are the face of the franchise, face of the league, however you want to do it. So, you know, they've, cal- you know, callous times, I mean, changed rules to help protect the quarterback. Mm-hmm. This isn't as much of a sense of urgency because it, it's not that important of a position in the minds of the rules makers. Hmm. I mean, at what point do you just accept the fact that it's a violent game and, like, there's going to be stuff that you, you – there's nothing you can do about it. Like, well, it, it in no. today's society, that's not – it's not as – that's not that simple. Can we make football, like, like kind of separate from today's society? What would you want to say? Maybe. Well, so no, we, I mean, so we can it's, a, it's a good it? point because why do we view, like, mis, mixed martial arts and we're not putting in safeguards necessarily for that, yet we, we do for football? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you should – then begin to take martial arts classes then because mm. then, you know, you would know martial arts better. Great point. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that great is true. point. Yeah. I just, I, I don't know. I, I look at it and to Brady's point, like that's the signal of the start of a game. Like the the sight, the excitement, everything that comes along with it, the buzz, and then it's disagree. just – and now we're gonna, you know, we we it's it's like the guy from the office who gets moved down, or what's it, Office Space? That movie was in Milton. He gets moved down to the bottom, and they just keep sort of closing the walls in. Yeah. And finally, they just get to the point to where it's like, dude, you no longer have a job here. It's over. Like it, well, it just the, feels like that's where the NFL is trying to get this. Instead of trying to eliminate the play altogether with you know an advantage on the fair catch to go out to twenty five, you know they've they've changed the way you know punts are. That play in particular has, has been, you know, played even kickoff formations. I would wonder if they would ever look at trying to space out uh, players more uh, in, in like a kickoff formation to help reduce the amount of space in between both teams. Because that's part of it, too, is when you've got a lot of space, guys building up speed and running towards each other, it's just a big collision. And so I wonder if there's a, a more creative way of trying to you know, allow more kickoffs, but not necessarily uh, allowing there to be quite as much space between them when they're doing this. Um, they did that. What, what what league was that they did it in? Was that the USFL or maybe? The and, and I'm sure you'll continue to see experiments done in, in both the XFL and USFL as, as almost experimental <laughs> leagues, or, or even even in the, in the preseason. You know, you might see some of that. I, I got to ask you guys this: well, yeah. how, how did they identify who was going to be the wedge breaker? Was it the guy that seemed like he had a little something wrong with him and they said, screw it. I was the wedge breaker my, my freshman year. Okay, that makes the some L5, sense. The L5, the, <laughs> hash, the hash guy is the wedge bre- buster. It, it was I the was, guy who had no guy. neck. <laughs> They're like, hey, um, get that guy. It looks like he's a walking around like a battery. Uh, just, he, has no, he has no fear, I'll tell you that. So, yeah. so Davis Mills with his thermos neck would never be oh, the yeah. wedge breaker. That would his never be. neck, if he wanted to really get a shorter neck, he'd have to go be the wedge breaker back in the old days. <laughs> he would lose like eight inches off his neck. <laughs> he'd have a normal <laughs> neck by, by, by three seasons into his career being a wedge breaker. Oh, that would a be neck. a trip watching a quarterback run down the hash. Uh, all of a sudden, you see Davis Mills racing at the Kentucky Derby. You're just like, hey, what happened to you, pal? I played wedge.